I ranted for a bit about what world building isn't. Now I'd like to have a little chat with you about what world building is. Hello, my name is Charlie and welcome back to my channel. And I have to say, all of these vlogmas videos, it's insane. I still can't believe that we're doing all this. At least I see. Uh, so many videos. Anyway, so what is world building? World building is the creating of a secondary world or a polar world or a Wayne Scott society. And I want to start there because these three things are three different things. Okay. And knowing which of these three things that you're making will actually help you out so much while world building. A secondary world is just that. It's a secondary world. It's not Earth. There is no Earth. Earth does not exist. This would be the vast majority of stories that you're dealing with. Now, a secondary world is also something like in The Witcher, where it actually takes place on Earth, but things went kind of wacky and crazy, and it's not exactly the Earth that you know, and thus world building must ensue. It's actually a secondary Earth because the first one isn't the one the story takes place in. Secondary worlds need to be built from the ground up. You could do anything here. Is this a ring world? Is this a flat world? Is this a world that is orbiting a star? Is it a star that's, a, is it a world that has a star orbiting it? You can literally do anything in a secondary world because you have complete control from the ground up of everything that is happening there. Now, the difference between a polder and a Wayne Scott world is a matter of a lot of discussion within the world building community. Simply put, a polder world is akin to Narnia, where there are two separate worlds. One is reached through some sort of portal that you go through and then you're there. Anything like that where you're completely whisked away to another world, that's technically a polder society. What's a Wayne Scott world? A Wayne Scott world is like Harry Potter. The two worlds share the exact same space but they're walled off from each other, so people don't see them. It's just behind the wainscoting, which is that thing that you put on the wall so that when you back a chair up, you don't put a hole in it. You know, that paneling that goes about halfway up the wall, that's wainscoting, and that's what this is talking about. It's it's fenced off, it's slightly hidden. It's not exactly where we see it. Knowing which kind of world you're writing will help you so much because the way they're written is different. You see, World building starts with a basic premise. I am creating a world where dot dot dot. Finish that sentence. That sentence is the most important and most crucial thing that you could do. Now, it could be as vague as you want it to be. If I were writing the sentence for The Wizard of Oz, I would say I am writing a world where a magical kingdom exists filled with all manner of strange life. Because that covers every book in Frank L. Baum's Wonderful World. Now, it's vague, doesn't really help us out that much, but it's at least a start. But that's the point of this sentence. It is to give us a basic idea of what we're doing. Now, if we want to be more specific and help ourselves out, we would add the qualifier of, is it a secondary world? Is it a polder world or a portal world, if you prefer? Is it a wainscot world? What kind of world? That way I know if this world, our world, th this one, is in it because when you're world building and i said this in the last video too but when you're world building the only thing that matters is the story that's all that matters that's the only thing that you need to focus on if your world building is not actively making the story better it's useless now i'm not saying that you shouldn't do it i'm not saying that you shouldn't be spending your time on it i'm just saying you need to check yourself at the door and realize the only things that you need to do are the things that directly impact your story. Do you need to construct the language that the uh, alien species is using in your setting? Is somebody going to have to decipher that language? Are there going to be words in that language that are going to be crucial to the understanding of the plot? If the answer to either of these is no, then no, you don't have to do that. This is why simplifying yourself down to as simple an explanation of the world as you can as your seed will help you out a lot. The simpler this sentence, the better your world building will be. So what kind of world are you making? Maybe let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. This is a really simple, straightforward start to this. I have 
an entire podcast dedicated to world building. It's called Myth Weaving. You can find it on most podcast directories, and you should be able to find a link to it down in the description box below. If you have any questions that you would like me to answer either on this channel or on that podcast, do let me know. I am currently putting together season three of that podcast, and I would love to know what y'all would like me to talk about. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe hit that notification bell. I stream twice a week on YouTube and occasionally on Twitch. If you like what I'm doing and would like to help keep it coming to you and, you know, support all of the work that I'm doing, you'll find links to my Patreon and my coffee down in the description box below. Thank you to everybody who does that. You literally mean the world to me. I would not be able to do half of what I'm doing if it wasn't for you. And since the world is large garbage fire and we need to remember what we need to stand up for, say it with me now. Black lives matter. Black trans lives matter. Trans identities are magic. And until next time, may you have the courage to ride your dreams into reality. And don't forget to have the fun. Bye.